Hello everybody! So today I'm not doing a movie review, I'm gonna do a bit of a movie discussion. Not so much about movies, but about movie trailers. So movie trailers are of course a very essential way of letting us know what a movie is about, what it's gonna look like, and basically getting us interested in seeing a movie. Now I for one am a really big fan of movie trailers. I think it's kind of an art form in a way of trying to capture the essence of a movie in just a couple of minutes, and quite often if I've watch the movie on Blu-ray for the first time, I'll actually check out the trailer for it just to see what they've done and, you know, how they actually managed to capture all that hour and a half, two hours, whatever, into a little bit of a teaser. I'm such a big fan of movie trailers, I even own these. These are DVD anthologies of nothing but movie trailers. There's like hundreds of trailers on here. Mostly sort of 70s, 80s grindhouse horror stuff and what have you, but you get the idea. I love trailers. But lately this is turning into kind of a love-hate relationship because trailers are letting me down in a really big way. Not just me, they're letting all of us down. And it's just getting worse. And honestly, I don't know where this is going to end, but so many trailers that we're seeing these days are full of things that we don't end up seeing in the movie. Now there's a couple of exceptions to the rule. For one, sometimes you get a trailer that's got maybe a cool song that you like in it, and I understand that that can be a directorial choice. I mean, a director might cut a trailer together and think, hey, I like this song, it might seem cool in it. For instance, the Guardians of the Galaxy, the first movie, the second trailer that came out, it had Spirit in the Sky in it, and my girlfriend, for one, was like, oh, I really like that song, and of course when it didn't appear in the movie, she was a little bit disappointed. But like I said, I get that. I mean, a director can throw in a song because it gels well with the visuals that we're getting and it just might seem like a cool idea at the time. So that's not so bad. Another case is when movie studios will actually create entire scenes in order to market the movie. And a prime case of that was Terminator 2. Back in the early 90s, some of the first trailers we got featured an assembly line of T-800 Terminators being assembled and having the skin put on them, that kind of stuff. And it was a really cool visual, of course, it didn't end up in the movie, but it was a really neat way to market the movie. And it was one of those cases that we didn't really mind so much when it wasn't in the movie because we thought, okay, like that was a cool way to tease us and get us interested in the movie, so that wasn't too bad. But then, a couple of years later, the first movie that I really remember as a standout for having scenes that didn't end up in the movie was actually Batman Forever. Now, don't judge me because I'm using a Joel Schumacher Batman movie as a way to get my point across here, but if you recall, in that trailer there was this one really cool shot of Bruce Wayne standing in front of a gigantic bat. And at the time we were like, wow, what does this represent? I mean, you know, is this Bruce sort of coming to terms with his destiny or whatever? Like, it seemed like a really neat visual and of course it didn't show up in the movie. There are a couple of other things in the trailers that didn't show up, but that might have been for the better. If the bat wants to play, we'll play. <laughs> Ugh. But that was the first time I really noticed that happening and it kept happening here and there over the years. Another really great point is in the movie Predators from 2010 where we had that really amazing shot of Adrian Brody's character standing there and suddenly getting covered in like dozens of predator targeting dots and I mean wow that looked amazing but of course you get to the movie and there weren't dozens and dozens of predators, there was like three hunting them and we didn't even have that scene in the trailer, in the movie, sorry. So that was a bit deceptive and that was where I really started thinking to myself, hang on a second, these trailers, they're full of shit. But I can't say it's ever been as bad as it was for this year. We have had so many trailers that featured a whole bunch of scenes that really got us, you know, interested in the movie that ended up not being in there. I think the first case that really stood out for me was Bad Neighbors 2. Now, I wasn't a fan of that movie. I think I gave it a 3 out of 10. It just rehashed the first one. It just didn't really do it for me. But there were a lot of jokes in the trailer that I actually thought were really funny and weren't in the film. And I think if they were maybe in the film, it might have made it a better movie. Give me an A! A! Give me an A! N. N. Give me an A! A! Give me an L! L! What does that smell? Never! And aside from that, 
Good luck if you're an LL Cool J fan and you went to see the movie because he was in the trailer because he wasn't. This is a very big deal. That's right. He was in the trailer, but his scenes were entirely cut from the film. He wasn't in there at all. And, you know, I think if you've got someone who's kind of as high profile as LL, who does have a fan base, who may have gone to see it because he was in the movie, well, that's pretty deceptive. And then, of course, we come to what is arguably the biggest case of false advertising we've ever had in trailers. And I'm talking about a little sci-fi movie that just came out. You may have heard of it called Rogue One. So it's kind of well known by now that Rogue One featured a lot of scenes and bits of dialogue that didn't end up in the final film. It wasn't so much a case of like, oh, they might appear on the deleted scenes, but there were scenes that were obviously completely redone. I mean, the film went through a whole bunch of reshoots, as we all know, but, I mean, scenes like Jin Erso running along the beach with the Death Star plans in her hand, I'm not going to spoil anything for the movie, but it did not turn out that way at all. So, you know, you can tell that that scene was dramatically redone. And things like that amazing shot of her walking out onto the walkway thingy and the TIE fighter rising up. I mean, we all got really excited to see what was going to happen in that moment, and it wasn't there at all. And I really, you know, look, it's one of those things, obviously, we're going to go and see anything with the name Star Wars attached to it. Oh, moi, moi, I love you! We're gonna go and see almost anything with the name Star Wars attached to it. But I really do feel deceived by the trailers that came out for this movie. Now, if you remember in The Force Awakens, there were some shots in the trailers there that also didn't make it into the final film, but some of those ended up in the deleted scenes, which is another case. I mean, that's fair enough. Sometimes, I know, you know, long before a movie comes out, they'll cut a trailer, but some scenes get deleted. But we end up getting to see them anyway. But there was that one shot of Mars Kanata handing Luke's lightsaber to what we suppose was Princess Leia, that didn't even end up in the deleted scenes, and it's still, to this day, got me wondering what the heck actually happened in there. So that being said, where does it all end? I have no idea. I mean, are we just gonna keep getting fed a whole bunch of crap from trailers and get all excited about stuff that we don't end up seeing? Probably. I don't have any definitive answer to this. This is more just a rant and kind of a way to get out there and see who's with me on this because I'm getting a little bit sick of it and I don't know, it just seems to be getting worse, so I can't really see it ending anytime soon. Hopefully it doesn't get even worse than it was with Rogue One, because, I mean, what are we going to end up getting trailers for movies where like 100% of it doesn't end up in the film? And are we just going to sit there and take it? Probably. Anyway, rant over. So let me know what you guys think. Drop me some comments and tell me what your thoughts are on, you know, not just Rogue One, but all the trailers that we've been getting. And let me know of some notable examples that really bug you about some trailers where you got excited for a scene and went and saw the movie and... Yeah. So drop me some comments either here or on Facebook, all my social media links are in the description below. And thank you so much to everyone who's been subscribing to my channel over the last few days. I really appreciate it because I am trying to build a bigger audience here and I really appreciate everyone who's been clicking that subscribe button and joining my channel. I really appreciate it and thank you very much. Oh, moi, moi, I love you. So drop me some comments, let me know what you think about bullshit trailers because I like to talk about movies and I would love to talk about movies with you. See you next time. Click subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest movie reviews. Skynet will be taking over any day now, so what have you got to lose? Nyaar.